Question, can you kindly share your perspective on the afterlife? I lost my mother over five years ago, and would love to know if you are clairvoyant, or even if you and other Pleiadians can actually go there to the spirit world with your technology? I would love to know your take on this. Thank you. Dear John, this is Tunia speaking. Thank you for your question. I feel deep empathy for you over you losing your mother. I imagine that must have hurt you a lot. I also feel that earthlings don't have a lot of access to good information about the afterlife. I think that information could give them some ease of mind and prevent some unnecessary suffering. Therefore I am glad that you asked this question. I hope that you and others will benefit from it. First of all, to avoid possible confusion, the questioner called me a Pleiadian, because I am indeed a human from the star system the Pleiades. Hence the term, Pleiadian. First of all, note that everything has a consciousness, on whatever level you look. One of your liver cells has a consciousness. Your liver itself has a consciousness. The collection of organs in your body has a consciousness. You have a consciousness. Earthlings have a consciousness. All of humanity, which includes earthlings and us Pleiadian, have a consciousness. And everything that exists has a consciousness. Everything that exists has one consciousness. This is often referred to as God, Prime Creator, Source, etc. Why is there a universe all around you? Because God created beings that created the universe. Why did God, indirectly, create the universe? Because just existing in an endless void, by itself, isn't very interesting. Hence God split off parts of itself, primarily so that it could get to know itself, and secondarily so that it could play with itself. However, there's not a lot of excitement in a game if both players know everything. Therefore, a lot of earthlings are born without the knowledge that they are part of God. Also, it's fun if the players grow and evolve over time. Therefore, most beings that are split off from God start at a very low level of consciousness. Then maybe they incarnate as a rock or as a bit of water on some planet, which yes, have small amounts of consciousness. They learn from being a rock and after a long time, they graduate and they can start incarnating as an animal. Once they've learned the lessons from being an animal, they can for example start incarnating as earthlings, etc., until the being has learned all the lessons that the universe has to offer and it merges back again into God. The text The Law of One, the raw material, goes into detail about this process. That text can be hard to read and YouTuber Aaron Abke has a very good introduction to this text. During each step of this process of evolution of consciousness, your soul has free will. Your soul decides when and where to be born and to which parents. Every single earthling has chosen to be born on earth. And souls are free to leave whenever they choose, it is easy for a soul to set up a situation where the person transitions, dies. Then they can rest for a time in the afterlife, and then start another life. You can think of your soul as the director of your personal movie. What you think of as your life, is the movie that this director is currently producing. Directors don't have complete control, actors are independent people who can make their own choices to an extent. A director may want to shoot a genuine desert scene, but that may not be possible if there are no deserts nearby. But directors, your souls, do have a large amount of control over your lives. And of course, your souls are part of you and want the best for you. In general, it is beneficial if the movie, what you think of as you, doesn't try to fight against the director, what you think of as your soul. In fact, you can learn to directly communicate with your soul by simply thinking, soul, what should I do today? If your soul answers, it will be in your normal inner voice. Only answers that arrive immediately, come from your soul. If you can communicate with your soul this way, then that is awesome and very helpful. It is good to do that regularly. If you cannot do that yet, joy and intuition comes from your soul too, so following them is a good idea too. Your soul, or this director, is immortal. Yes, this movie will end, but at that point the director will take a holiday and then start directing another movie. Any horrible things that occur during your life isn't damage that's being done to your soul or to the director, it is only done inside the movie. The director cannot be harmed. Do most directors produce movies in which people are happy all the time and there's no conflicts or drama? No. 
That's because there's not a lot to be learned from such movies or such lives. Or in other words, most souls prefer lives with lots of lessons in them, as opposed to comfortable happy lives. You could have chosen to be born as a Pleiadian, my group of people, and experience a happy, comfortable life. But you chose to be born on Earth because Earth is where it's at, if you want soul growth. Your souls and God itself care a lot more about soul growth than Earthlings do, and a lot less about comfort and happiness than Earthlings do. I am not saying this is right or wrong. As Tunya I am deeply troubled by your suffering. God himself has decided that Earthlings have suffered enough and that the situation on Earth is going to be improved. But still, fundamentally it remains true that your souls and God care more about soul growth and less about comfort than you do. I say this without any judgment against you, because I can't even imagine how challenging life on Earth must be. From one perspective, you are suffering terribly and it is unfair. We are trying to help you. From another perspective, your lives there on Earth are experiences that your souls have willingly taken on. Also, your souls keep continuing to consent to being on Earth, otherwise your soul could easily arrange for you to pass on and it would happen quickly. So, from that perspective, your mother is completely fine. She is just having a holiday right now in the afterlife and she will start another life when she chooses. Of course, that is just one perspective, another entirely valid perspective is that it hurts that your mother died. Both perspectives have merit. As I said earlier, your souls have been split off from God. Do you think that God would set up the afterlife in such a way that his parts were well taken care of, or that his parts suffered forever if they were bad? Of course, God has set up the afterlife in such a way that his parts, your souls, are well taken care of. Thus, the afterlife is generally a very pleasant place. That said, again God wants to encourage soul growth. So while the afterlife is generally very pleasant for the vast majority of earthlings, the afterlife does reflect back to the soul, the state that the soul is in. This means that if you treated others poorly, you'll be treated a bit more poorly in the afterlife yourself. This isn't meant to punish you, this is meant to help you to see, oh, so this is what it's like to be mistreated. Wait, I mistreated others myself. Oh, no. I didn't realize I was being so awful to those people. And then soul growth is achieved and lessons are learned. At that point you can go to another level of the afterlife that is better suited to your new consciousness. Your own soul can use the same tactic here on earth, if you do something, whether good or bad, you may very well experience having someone else do the same to you, although there may be a large time delay between those things. That way, you get a greater understanding of what that thing is like and what your actions have achieved. Hence the statement, you reap what you sow. If a certain specific bad thing keeps happening to you, then it may be the case that your soul keeps sending that experience your way in the hope that you learn a specific lesson from it. That lesson might be, I need to stand up for myself. Or maybe you have done something to other people in the past, or even a past life, and now your soul wants you to experience what it is like to be on the receiving end of that. If a certain specific bad thing keeps happening to you, sometimes you can make that stop by simply learning the lesson, or by recognizing that you have done that same bad thing to other people. Once you have done that, there is no reason for your soul to keep sending that bad thing your way. However, your soul doesn't have full control over your life. Sometimes bad stuff just happens. And if your soul wants you to go to Japan and you do not want to go to Japan, then you can simply not decide to go to Japan. You still have free will. You still have much control over your life. Your soul loves you, your soul is part of you and your soul wants what is best for you. However, it generally prioritizes soul growth more highly than you do, and it prioritizes comfort less highly than you do. Again, I do not judge you for this, I know that life on earth can be incredibly harsh. So what is the afterlife like? It is a place where souls can rest and rejuvenate and learn things in between lives. It's usually very pleasant for the vast majority of earthlings, but it is built in a way that facilitates soul growth, which may mean that there are small challenging aspects to it. That said, it's more pleasant than challenging. And yes, people can meet other people there. Any earthling, any Pleiadian is born with the capability to communicate with people in the afterlife. In fact, anyone who can channel ETs can also channel people who have passed, because the channel ET method is one way of talking to people who have passed. 
We Pleiadians typically use spirituality and not technology for that. Your mother would like to tell you that she loves you very much, that she is proud of you and that she is in a good place. There's a twinge of regret there, but your mother did not provide details about that and I did not press her. As a personal note, I love her energy. She's radiant. If you would like more details about the afterlife, Matthew Ward is an excellent source of information and he has spoken in detail about the afterlife. At the start of every month, he is being channeled and those posts are placed on the site eraoflight.com. Finally, I will give a recommendation against people consciously ending their own lives. If you do not want to hear a discussion of that, feel free to turn this video off now. This is the last topic of this video, so you would not miss anything else if you were to turn the video off now. 3. 2. 1. We do not recommend that people consciously end their own lives. It is up to the soul, or to the movie director, to determine when your life ends. If you are living on earth, that is because your soul wants you to live on earth. When your soul decides it wants you to transition or die, then your soul can easily arrange that. Most people who do consciously end their own lives, regret at the moment they enter the afterlife. I say this with all my love, because I can't even imagine how much pain some of you are in. I wish I could help you more directly. I do not judge anyone who has made that decision. Still, despite the harshness of earth, many beings want to live as earthlings because they can learn so many lessons here. In fact, there were many, many times more beings who wanted to be born as earthlings, than there were beings who were allowed to be born on earth. Centuries ago, I applied to be born as an earthling and was rejected because my soul was not strong and experienced enough yet. Being born among Pleiadians was actually my second choice. Because while well, yes, I have much more comfort, you earthlings are getting much more soul growth. Thus, I do not recommend being so quick to throw away your life there on earth. If you are thinking about doing that, it can be good to reach out to people. Support is available. Some support links are in the description box. Plus, I promise that the lives of earthlings will get dramatically better in the future. I hope this was helpful and that it gave you some comfort and peace. We would like to reiterate that we understand that losing your mother can of course be very painful. None of what we have written invalidates that. We are sending you love. When we meet, we would like to offer you a big hug and also medium services if you want them. If you have any additional questions, feel free to ask. With all my love. Tunya